Have you ever took the risk of buying a brand new machine without actually having work for it? Well, at KDL Engineering, they have done just that and it has paid off massively. Who are you and what do you make here at KDL Engineering? Hi, I'm uh, Paul Rollins. I'm the Managing Director of KDL Engineering. We're a small family uh, precision engineering subcontract business. Uh, we make a lot of parts for all sorts of different industries, from making parts for trains, uh, oil and gas industry, uh, and even parts for Formula One cars. So we're stood in front of your latest purchase, which is your, Correct. which I believe is your third sliding head machine. Is, yeah. So what made you buy another? Um, well, the other two purchases have, uh, have, you know, made life so much easier for us making uh, various components that we used to make on the old bigger machines. They've, they've managed to do components in one operation uh, and also speed parts up so they're much more economical. So it was, uh, you know, it was a, the way to go for us really. And we spoke about this earlier and I'm, I'm quite interested for everyone at home to know this, but you didn't actually have any work lined up when you bought this machine, did you? Correct. Uh, I took a bit of a risk, obviously as a, a small business and uh, uh, I don't have to, I'm not answering to anybody, you know. Uh, you just get that gut feeling sometimes that we need another machine. Uh, and because we, we do a lot of work for the Formula One guys during the winter season where they're building the car for next year, we always get extremely busy and we never had enough capacity. Uh, and uh, the, the parts that we make tend to be quite small. Uh, so the 20 mil machine was ideal for us. Uh, we have got a 32 machine already, which we've got two of those. Uh, which, uh, but the, the, the most of the parts we do are small, so we decided to go for the smaller footprint. Also, the machine's quite quicker, a lot, bit, quite a bit quicker on the parts that we make. Although so, a lot of the stuff that we do is quite low volume, uh, we still found the parts really easy to set up. Uh, when I originally looked at uh, sliding head machines, uh, I always had the conception that were for really high volume parts, uh, but we tend to use them for quite low volume parts because once you get used to them they're quite easy to set up uh, and, and do s small batches on. So talking about small batches, what sort of numbers are we talking about for your small batches? Well, uh, less than a hundred uh, we'll, we'd set up a machine for um, because it can do the first and second operation and nine, well, 99 times out of 100 there's always a, a face and chamfer operation to do on this part anyway uh, and we were having to do those manually so the fact that it can do it all in one operation keeps the accuracy of the part as well much better so uh, it works much better for us even if it takes a long time to set up a lot of the parts tend to repeat a little bit as well or the similar parts so uh, it makes sense really to use all the tooling keep the tooling set up for various similar jobs. So obviously you went for a smaller machine before but what sort of options did you look at and what options did you get when you bought this uh, what you knew is purchase. Yeah, well, we, we got the high pressure uh, coolant system on there as well. But, uh, we had that on our second machine. On the first machine, we didn't have high pressure coolant. Uh, and after buying the machines with the high pressure coolant, we realised we probably we should have had the high pressure coolant on there. And we actually had it retrofitted as part of the deal with the third machine onto the first star uh, because it, it, it um, helps re reduce the uh, amount of swarf build up blasting the swarf off and it increases the cycle times quite a lot we found so also we had the the SCP fitted although we've only had the machine quite a, a small number of weeks so we haven't had a chance to use that much but um, we're hoping that will come into effect because um, we've machined quite a lot of titaniums and hard alloys on there and I think that'll come into its own. Now something I was quite interested to hear and I think everyone at home might be quite interested here is you're not actually using the sliding head feature though, are you? No, we, don't, we use the machines in non-guide bush mode, which always seem, it seems a little bit odd, uh, but because our components are quite short, uh, we, we, we tend to use it in that mode. We find it's a lot easier set, to set up, a lot quicker to set the machines in non-guide bush mode. Also, the parts it, they tend to be a little bit more accurate, uh, because a lot of the time with the F1 uh, parts, we're chasing 10 microns, possibly even less sometimes, down to 6 microns we produce on these machines so the accuracy looks much better and also the um, the bar ends are much shorter as well that we find the, the remnant so obviously when you're using titanium and, and special alloys the waste is much less as well now I just want to jump back quick because I I'm just interested to hear about you actually went and bought a smaller machine this time now yeah. I think sometimes this can be in any industry where 
people go for a bigger machine because they think, well, this works smaller where maybe I can then use this for, for bigger, sure, yeah. bigger components. So why did you take the decision to buy a smaller machine for the smaller components? Yeah, I mean, I, we did that a, a first time round, I guess, because as subcontractors, you never know what's coming along. But because we already had 232 machines already, and most of the parts were always less than 20 millimeters, we jumped for the 20 mil machine because it's a much smaller footprint. Also, we found that the cycle times are much quicker because this, the traversing distance is a lot smaller. Um, and also, it uses less power as well, which obviously now with the electric zip prices going up is also another benefit. So, obviously you have three sliding heads all from Star. Yes. Has that made it easier for you for if you need to swap a program from machine to machine or yeah. as, as we've been told, you only have one guy running all three of these machines. So yeah. sure that must make it easier for him as well. Yeah, it, it always makes sense to stick with the same uh, type of machine because as I said, the machine programs are interchangeable, the tooling's interchangeable and also the guy, if he's up to speed on programming the machines, uh, to stick with the same language and everything, it's so much quicker. You can basically buy the machine and have it running within a week uh, on a job uh, rather than having to go through that long learning curve of having to learn a new language and get all different tooling. Now I want to talk about how versatile this machine is and how yeah. that's actually helped you as a company because I actually have a part here that, well can you explain how this machine's helped you do this part? Yeah sure, uh, well when we originally bought the machines we were thinking about small circular components but then as we got more used to using the machines and it obviously got milling you know, capabilities on there, we started do, doing milling and drilling and then we started looking at uh, components that you would think possibly generally do on a, a BMC, one of our VMCs. But <coughs> a component like this would uh, maybe you'd have to saw it off, mill the first side, drill it and machine the back off with three operations. Now we can make these at a round bar in the machine, fully automatic, it can machine the square, pick it up on a rectangular collet, part it off, face it, uh, put all the chamfers on it's complete and uh, it's also it's automatic so it, uh, it doesn't involve a man to load it. So as we said at the start, you took quite a risk buying this yeah, without yeah. actually having any work yeah, for yeah. it. So do you think that decision paid off? Oh definitely yeah, I mean we've only had it three months now and uh, we've seen some work coming through for it already uh, and like I said the F1 season for the next year's car starts to kick into you know, action now in October until Easter. So I would think this machine will be pretty, uh, pretty busy with Formula One parts until then. Uh, and I'm already seeing inquiries coming through for some larger volume stuff that we'll be able to probably do in summer as well after that. 